Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to part 16 of the Final Fantasy IV Let's Play. Where, unless we checked, it's still Orange Magma. Yes. We're almost done with the Underworld, ladies Hey, do you think we're, this is actually the sewer systems where we're just flying over piss? <laughs> it's very luminescent piss. <laughs> Nobody here drinks water, it's all soda. <laughs> Urine doesn't have to be necessarily yellow. True. Alright, so if you recall uh, a month ago, uh, we got the... Uh, we got Luna's necklace Luca. from the Dwarven King. Luca. Is it Luca? Yeah, like the stadium from Final Fantasy X. I thought I said Luca's necklace. Uh, I just made that relevant. <laughs> 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 Some realization. <laughs> and now our enemies here are... The oh, enemies no. here... Alright, so if you're like me and you tackled the Sylph Cave and the Feymark before getting here, this dungeon won't be an issue whatsoever. A majority of the encounters, though, are these creatures right here, the Vampires and the Vampire Bats. A really annoying encounter because the Vampire Bats only have one attack, and it's Blood Feast, and they all t attack in a row. Oh man, that is, that's tedious. Yeah, that is incredibly tedious. So, do what you can, and kill them all at once, please. What the fuck is Rydia doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, over here! <laughs> Raise the roof! <laughs> Raise the roof. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm simply swapping rooms. But yeah, this is going to be the majority of your encounters. We'll be seeing a few new creatures every once in a while, but for the most part, you're fighting these two particular creatures. Oh, I love you, Auto Battle. Yeah, right. Well, I love you, DS version, for introducing Auto Battle, and I love you, PSP version, for bringing it back. <laughs> oh, I really do. Wasn't there, like, a whole bunch of gimmicky doors and shit like that that always fall... Yep, there we go. Ah, uh, good segue, Matt. <laughs> yeah, the gimmick with the sealed cave is that there are trap doors. Every gray door you see in this dungeon is a trap door that you have to fight. The trap door only has one attack. Well, it has two, technically. It's going to search one of your party members at first, and then uh, it's going to follow... And then it's going to blow your brains out. And then it's going to follow up on an attack called Knife Dimension, which is an instant kill. I'll... On that note, there was a bug in Final Fantasy IV DS... Where, if you had Cecil with, like, I think you had to have Cecil equipped with a few abilities, but if you did it right, they would always target Cecil, they would then cast Dice Dimension on Cecil, and it would always fail. I think I know what you're talking about. I think I did a similar setup. Was it Provoke? No, it wasn't, I don't think I did Provoke. I think it was just Blade Cover. It focused targets on something like that. Like, it wasn't Provoke where you had to do it routinely. It was just Cecil automatically, they automatically targeted Cecil. Yeah. Well, because I did the Sylph Cave and the Fey March before I got here, I'm strong enough to just blast through the trap doors with physical attacks alone. But I'm really not smart enough to know where you're going. Nah, I'm, I'm, uh, 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 Kane. <laughs> <laughs> Kane is apparently trying to do his tightrope pra practice. And... But in case Hiya. you're not strong enough to just blast through the trap doors with physical attacks, what you can do is that you should be leveled up enough to have Reflect with Rosa. What you do is that you wait for the trap door to use the target so you know who he's going to use Ninth Dimension on, and then cast Reflect on that character, because Ninth Dimension can be bounced back, and it'll instantly kill the trap door as a result. Hmm. That's generally my strategy that I use when I'm not strong enough to blast through the door with physical attacks. But in case you don't have Reflect at this point... Or the Goron secret crop. That. Uh, you're pr I think it's safe to assume you're under-leveled, or you are more of a badass than I am. Hmm. Assuming I have any degree of badass to begin with. Get in my bella! Unfortunately, though, the sealed cave, besides having these dickish trapdoors, also has a lot of dead ends. Lovely. A lot of trapdoors lead to empty rooms. On the plus side, though, they do uh, leave a considerable amount of experience at this point in the game. Right, I sort of grind it here, too, with the doors. I fight all the doors. Even though I know where all the dead ends are, I fight all the doors anyway, because I want experience and I want to cut back on grinding. So you're going to grind now, instead of grinding later? Yeah, and the only reason why I'm showing the battles off is because they're technically mandatory if you go after them yourself, so... It's kind of like the equivalent of opening up a monster in a box chest. You can ignore it, but you don't want to. Exactly. Meanwhile, this cave has some very distinct looks, despite the um, other caves. And by that you mean the ropes. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's the lag mites at the bottom, too. You don't think Cecil would stop yelling that out after five times? <laughs> I do like the spears you can uh, see on the top of the door. Says like, this is not the first time the door was fought. <laughs> right? This door has vanquished many of foe. 
Many of them dwarves. <laughs> because they don't know how to shut their own security system off. <laughs> Although I have to admit, they kind of look like plungers. What, the, 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 the spears on top of... Oh, okay. <laughs> Here rests Mario P. Mario, <laughs> who's just trying to clear the plumbing. Ooh, the Lustrous Sword. Lustrous Sword is a holy elemental sword for Cecil, but uh, I already have a much stronger sword, the Defender, that I got from the Fame March. So there's no need for it, unless right. I'm fighting the undead type, which I'm not. If you're wondering why Kane is glowing red like that, I equipped him with the Avenger uh, blade before entering this place, which is a two-handed weapon that automatically casts Berserk on the holder, but seeing as Kane only attacks anyway because he doesn't have any magic to spare, I figured why the hell not. So Kane is But the harder. downside is that it turns you into a Marvel fanboy. <laughs> you, you can't stop attacking everybody. <laughs> 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 oh, that was a cheap, that was a cheap uh, shot, Just. Are you, are you a DC or a Marvel guy? Uh, or neither? DC, but it's not like I'm completely against Marvel. I do like X-Men. I am actually a fan of both. X-Men and you believe Punisher. Johnny, how dare you be able to take the neutral side of the, on the Geek Wars, you fucking pussy sucker. Like, <laughs> I'm not totally against Marvel, it's just that I don't like the claim that you can relate to them more than DC. I can't relate to Marvel any better <laughs> either. Connect, I connect with Spider-Man. <laughs> I don't connect with Spider-Man. On those days where my web powers aren't working, I connect <laughs> with him. I connect to Frank Castle, a man who apparently does not understand the concept of vigilanteism, nor do the cops in doing their jobs. Oh, I hate when my head's engulfed in flames. Oh, <laughs> I hate being the Grim Reaper. <laughs> I hate my life. I'm completely immortal, and I get to ride a motorcycle everywhere. Do 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 do. I can't, don't like it when I can, can't scale buildings on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to there this. There are two rooms in this one room that actually lead to treasure. Uh, and a save point. Uh, but most of the, the rest of the doors are dead ends. And random encounters. What about the ropes? Do they go anywhere? Uh, no, the ropes don't go anywhere. If you attempt to climb them down... Uh, yeah, I can imagine... Ooh, that's dangerous! <laughs> I, can imagine, I can imagine Cecil going down and then out of nowhere Leviathan shouts, Alright, Cecil, here's how to repel. Press and hold the action button to proud <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes, I'm looking forward to Rugger Solid. Yeah, we'll be getting to that soon, ladies and gentlemen. So I can get to Metal Gear Solid 2. I do like that game. This We've is really majestic the... music for Orange Caverns. It's the only cavern music, though, unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately, I... it's still a good track. Well, no, I love the track in itself, but, you know, you wish you know, the music was a bit more diversified. There was at least... I, I would have liked one more cavern music. Ah, the whole Zelda's Dilemma. Yeah, I, I guess you could say that. So, so kid's like, I know I've been here before, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if chest or trap door. <laughs> hey, Cecil! Can you imagine Kate actually pushing Cecil into the trap door? Rosa, I'm terribly sorry what happened to Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> and the next trap door is probably you see Cecil's legs inside the team. <laughs> <laughs> No, actually, the trap door gets indigestion and barfs him out, and then Cecil just looks really pissed at, um, and Cecil looks really pissed at Kate. Kate's all like, what the hell happened? And he said, dude, I'm bad luck. <laughs> actually, how do we know that these were actually deactivated? Well, no, they're, they're, they're purposely there. The dwarves put them there. That's what I got. Honestly, I think that the dwarves deactivated them, that Cecil came in, and they reactivated by accident. Like, right when he re-entered the door, one of the dwarves actually flipped the switch back on, not knowing any better. <laughs> and, then ready, and then they go through this again, and Rydia keeps killing at Cecil, calling him a jinx. Yeah, every step of the way. <laughs> and it's kind of a... It is odd, though, you're right, because... Cecil seems to bring this, about more... It is a security system set up by the dwarves, and they know that we have to go get the crystal, why not deactivate the trap doors? Do you think you could tell them that? No, because it... Which is really kind of retarded in a way too, when you think of it, because it's like we gotta we gotta hold up these security perimeters to keep Gobez out. Therefore, we're gonna send you in there and destroy our security <laughs> systems. <laughs> Make this still working. Kind of like taunting anonymous to break down your whole computer defense systems. Oh, how'd that happen? Oh, okay, well that's actually the last gimmick of the trap door. If you take too long to kill it, it transforms into another monster. How did you take too long to kill it? It looks like you did the same thing you normally did. Well, unfortunately, I don't think the physical. I, I think it might have just beat me in the ATB. Darn. Gage. He pronounced it Gage Gage. 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 <laughs> yeah, like Nicholas Gage. 
Nicholas <laughs> Nicholas Kaje. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there at, the, at that time, uh, every, every time I fought the trapdoor, it transformed into one of two monsters: the yellow dragon or the chimera brain. Uh, Which really just goes to show that this is not your day. Well, the, uh, yeah, the yellow dragon is considerably more difficult than the chimera brain because it counters everything with lightning. Hey, Amber. Okay, so we got the dark crystal. Actually, I should uh, no, no, I wait till after we uh, complete this uh, next sequence before I bring that up. But we got a dark crystal. Hmm. Ah. Why am I not fucking surprised? We can never get one of these things without shit following us. The walls. The walls, they're, they're so beautiful. Cecil, not now. <laughs> <laughs> I liked how they showed, like, the doors constantly moving closer and closer and closer to you each yeah. time with the demon wall encounter. Ah, uh, demon wall. I'm getting seven flashbacks. Ooh, I hate that guy in seven. I had no problem with him. I hate... You got, I hated the fucking... I'm gonna drop a rock on you. <laughs> Suddenly you're done. <laughs> Admittedly, that's very practical. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I hate it when a boss kicks my ass. No, it's really funny, though, because the game was pretty much telling you to rely entirely on your materia, and then there's a boss who's completely resistant to this stuff, except for one good blast from Bahamut. And I'm like, whoops. Yeah. Well, I always relied on... Uh, the demon wall is trembling. I, I always relied on the... Uh, I always brought Red 13 for me in the Ancient Temple. Because mm -hmm. at that point, I would have um, the Limit Break where he cast haste on himself. And I would uh, generally get a lot of physical attacks in that way. Right. The Lunatic High. Yeah, there you go. The Lunatic High. <laughs> Lunatic High. <laughs> I'm a maniac. That's kind of what he calls it. Oh, uh, well. Or, so, is, or wait, am I thinking of the... I don't think it's called Lunatic... But maybe it's Lunatic High? But one or the other. We'll find out eventually. Anyway, so the really demon wall here is constantly moving towards you. If it gets too close, it's gonna, it's gonna start using an attack called Crush, which is an instant kill. Befitting of a demon that's a wall. Yes. This boss makes a return in Final Fantasy XII with a really kick-ass design. There are two demon walls you fight in Final Fantasy XII, and guess what? They follow, rel relatively speaking, the same gimmick, except they fight back more often. Yeah. And it's actually a very gruesome scene in a way. If the wall gets close enough to you where it can cause Crush, it'll immediately, the camera will shift behind the demon wall, and then it'll just hear a thing. Boom! Bam! Yeah, and then and you see game over. I was dead. like, oh god. Ugh, ugh, that's kind of gruesome too, yeah. But, uh... Again, since we went to the two optional dungeons before this, the demon wall is not a problem at all. But the, the even then, the, the strategy, DS version was hilarious stuff. The strategy, the, the strategy I can only give you, no it's matter what level you are, is attack. <laughs> it's like attack, the, attack, 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 attack. The DS version was fucking hilarious though. He had like he had a shit ton of HP, like roughly a hundred thousand. Yeah, he was he was more of a tank in the DS version. Well, that's I mean, actually it, really it, it, of a wall. It's a wall. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Squall, why don't you go talk to that wall, asshole? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, like, it's like I'm talking to a wall. <laughs> Can you imagine a demon wall and Squall striking up a conversation? Hello, buddy, how's it going? Oh, you know, just, you know, the basic shit. Everybody's so much around me, so stupid. Yeah. Put her there. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Crush. <laughs> Game over. <laughs> And we only show that random battle off because that was a technically new encounter, the Lesser Marilith. The mean, Lesser Marilith? Lesser Marilith, yeah. Doesn't really mean anything. And yeah, where's Lesser Marilith? Lich? Lesser Kraken? Lesser Tiabot? Lesser Chaos! I don't think we're gonna run into anything lesser. Baby Marilith. Damn, we where's the Lesser Marilith? <laughs> the Lesser Gold Bloods. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> lesser Garland? Yeah. I will beat you senseless! <laughs> Hey, we so, got Faraga. So, uh, we're done with the dungeon, but I can't use an emergency exit or warp to get through this place any faster. You know, I, I, I hate it when I have to backtrack and yeah, right. get out of it. Kane, why can't we use it? I want to take the scenic route. Why? <laughs> Just because. Okay, I'm trusting you. You the do that. The textures <laughs> of these walls are exquisite. Can I really trust you on this one, Kane? Cecil, have I ever betrayed <laughs> you? <laughs> Cecil, would I lie? <laughs> <laughs> you can't see him roll his eyes because of his fucking helmet. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you can imagine you can imagine him doing like the whole Igor thing with his hands, where he's just going like this. <laughs> his fingers are crossed behind his back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kane's a douche. Kane is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're just about out of here. The exit's right there. Oh, I'm sorry. The fog oh, damn it! So turned the fog machine back on. Smog alert. Okay, don't do it. Okay, <laughs> put your fingers in your ears and say la 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 la. I'm not under his control. Psych. Oh, we lost a dark crystal. I like how the three other three are just standing there. <laughs> we, should, we should do something. 
Fuck, that's the last Dark Crystal Golbez needed, so now he can open up the way to the moon? <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where the fuck did that come from? I can imagine, I can imagine Rose and Rydia going to look at this going, so we're going to the moon? Yes. I, I and now that. Final Fantasy IV becomes an episode of the Honeymooners. I would actually like to bring up an interesting glitch that you can do in the original version. Do we go to the moon without the, uh... No. Um, um, if you recall way back when we first entered the underworld, and we, uh, we had to fight Calcabri and the dolls. Right. And you get the, uh, the crystal gets taken away from you from Golbez. Mm -hmm. Right after that boss fight, and once you're able to get control back of yourself when you're in a dwarven castle, you can cast the spell Warp to warp back into the crystal room, and the crystal's there. <laughs> you can take that crystal, and you can skip the sealed cave entirely. Nice. The moment you get to the entrance, can't be crazy. Oh, lovely. <laughs> I love that glitch, but you can't do that in this version, or the DS version. But you managed to defeat our defense systems. Well done. <laughs> So, the Dwarven King doesn't look too disappointed that we fucked up. You can't see it, but there's a frown under that magnificent beard. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. He prays, you say. But he tells us of the the legend of the Lunar Whale. Huh? And, uh, he's not sure if it exists or not, but then he find, we, we He says it's, the, it's a legend passed by the Mesidian people, and we just told him that Mesidia actually exists. Hmm. There's a legend in Mesidia about a flying whale. And that's kind of why it's a legend, Chad. <laughs> he was drunk that night. <laughs> but it turns out he was true. <laughs> Don't you know, Johnny? It's a fantasy work. All, so, fa all rumors are reality. A la Persona 2. We need to go back to the overworld and to Mysidia, but if you recall, uh, when Sid uh, self-destructed, uh, he sealed up the entrance to the underworld. So we need to dig our way out. So now he's going to install a massive drill. Into the There's airship. a drill that'll pierce the grounds and into the heavens. Oh no, it, it, it more like it pierces the doorway to Earth. <laughs> That's not as interesting, but... So now we get more comic relief. What comic relief? They're I just spinning around in the I'm just stating what it's supposed to be. I'm not laughing, but... I guess you can call it cute. Sid really has it out for Edge. Edge is a fucking lazy ass. Then again, Cecil doesn't look like he's doing much either. Because he's Cecil. <laughs> Cecil, why do I waste my life with these assholes? <laughs> Johnny, think about it. Considering the rotten sh events of luck Cecil had, do you really want him picking up a hammer? <laughs> <laughs> one, <laughs> one click, <laughs> and the entire thing poofs <laughs> and falls to ashes. <laughs> you know, the whole thing just collapses right there. They all fall down. <laughs> it's like that SpongeBob episode. Where he had to make a work of art. He, one, one hammer swing, it poofs, and it makes either a Michelangelo Davis or it just disintegrates. <laughs> oh shit, Sid collapsed. <laughs> I think you finally realized the way, but I detonated <laughs> a few parts ago. I should have died. Whoops. Oh no, he just overworked himself again. He overworked himself? That's a shame. Oh no. Sid doesn't die. Why isn't he you the can't main keep hero? a good sit down. Why wasn't he the main hero? Because he just because he's the kind of guy who jumps out of plane to blows himself up. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, actually, isn't there a is there a Sid in any Final Fantasy that dies? I mean Sid in six Sid in Final Fantasy thirteen can potentially die. Sid in Final Fantasy thirteen, Sid in Final Fantasy twelve. So Sid now it's becoming Fantasy a trend six. to kill so now it's becoming a trend to kill Sid. No, because Sid becomes a bad guy. <laughs> Oh, in 13? Yeah. yeah I, I, have, you, uh, have you seen the transformed Sid in Final Fantasy 13? No. They were like, hey, do you remember Sephiroth? Here he is. Well, it's funny, because I'm, I'm actually... I'm the actually dude looks like a damn I'm Seraphim. actually past the part in 13 where I met Sid, and I think, wow, Sid, I, I'm getting douchebag Sid vibes from Sid this time. Yeah, he is a fucking tosser. It looks like a giant boat with a, a boat with a giant dick. You know, it's actually funny, because um, I, well, I was picking up 13 again uh, about two weeks ago. And I'm, I'm in. I finally get past that god awful chapter four. And uh, I we, Astro Proto Florian. No, 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 no. Is it after before or after? Uh, I'm not sure, but it's after we uh, hijack the ship. Yeah, it's after we. Ha it's it's after chapter four when they get into they they take the ship and they get shot down after that wonderfully long and unnecessary CGI sequence. Um, and then we're we're captured by the the the, the big ass airship. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, suddenly, it's like, I'm, I'm reminded of Limblum from Final Fantasy IX. And um, then, sure enough, the, ship the is name called of the Limblum. place is called the fucking Limblum. <laughs> I was like, called it! Yes! Like, I never even looked at a fucking guy for this, and I called that. Yeah. 
Well, I'm still rather ashamed that you're still playing it. <laughs> ah, well, I have to play it. You have to finish it, I guess. I don't think it's that bad. Teach their own. Like I said, like I said, like the core combat itself is okay. It's just that what the elements get married with ultimately ruins my experience. Believe you me, it's gonna take a lot more. For, you're still at the innocent, naive stage of the game where it's like, okay, this ain't <laughs> you, so you bad. You don't know better. <laughs> Yeah, but well, you're gonna get further in, and you're gonna realize, wow, this uh, this ain't so good. And then the rule becomes, and then the exception becomes. The well, rule. we'll see what happens the further I play along. All right, and that's why you're not with me when I play in the game. <laughs> you should hate this. You should probably like that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, if you recall, we got the rat tail from the Fay Mark, and there's only one person in the world that will do something with a rat tail. This asshole lives Baku? in a small cave. Uh -huh. We need the hovercraft in order to get there, so... Who would have thought rat tails were such delicacies? So this, um... This miniature person... It's... He never once thought of just cutting off a rat for the tail? I don't think they know what a rat is. They're kind of isolated. They know of pigs and frogs, but not rats. Retarded. I don't know what the random encounters are in the forest there. There might be hedgehogs. That's kind of there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, so he you, you exchange the rat tail from he gives you uh he gives you adamantite. For a rat's tail. Yes. Fuck, that's a weird that's a weird barter system here. One man's trash is another person's treasure, I presume. Amen to that. So you're probably wondering what do you do with the adamant Adamant I wanna call it adamantium, but that's <laughs> fucking metal that binds a wolverine skeleton. Although uh, it is technically the same mineral, adamantite. Yeah, you're probably right. So what do you do with the adamantite? Throw it in the mock okay. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna blow up the world again. Give it, give it, give it that you're, given who you are, I wouldn't be surprised if you did it by sheer no, accident. Throw a magma key into the world and cause that explosion. I can't <laughs> imagine what adamantite would do. <laughs> Fuck you, gold place. <laughs> <laughs> so you take the adamantite to this old man, who says his his working days are over until he finds adamantite. Luckily, we so have you take out the adamantite, clock <laughs> him in the head with it, and <laughs> say, like, "Here, <laughs> get back to work." <laughs> Now you got a Myth Graven Blade? Or no, you gave we, it to him? we gave the Myth Graven Blade. If you're ever wondering why you could never sell or get a get rid of the Myth Graven Blade, it's because of this. Myth Raven? Myth Graven. Mm -hmm. Okay, he said Myth Raven. I thought he said Myth Graven. Want me to call it by its uh, SNAS name? Legend? It's called <laughs> Legend Blade. So, we, with the combination of the Animantite and the Myth Graven Blade, he's going to make you a new sword, but it takes a bit, though. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to advance the plot for a bit. Then, once that plot sequence is over, we're going to revisit him and get our new sword. <gasps> advance the plot. Yeah. One thing you can say about your good playthroughs compared to mine, at least you go somewhere. <laughs> it's like <laughs> well, three that's the, what, that, Well, that's another reason why I wanted to make this post commentary. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and then so the plane goes down in flames. I don't think we're going to be able to play most RPGs. I don't think we're going to be able to play some RPGs post commentary. I don't, I don't want to play nine post. Do you want to play 9 post or live? Live. You want to do it live? I love 9 live. Yeah, I can see us doing 9 live. One born of a dragon. Turn page. <laughs> Bearing darkness and light. Can you imagine, like, this going on in the, like... <laughs> can you imagine, like, an audiobook? Shall rise to the heavens. Bing! <laughs> <laughs> Over the still land. Bing! <laughs> the mood's light eternal. Brings a promise to the planet. Bing! With bounty and grace. Bing! Turn to side B. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have like such a high reading level when I was a kid then, so it was like... I would always so flip and hate just having to wait to turn the page because of the fucking book is, the, <laughs> the tape player said so. Wait. <laughs> the, the tape player is like... Cause, no, because in school the teacher wanted you to follow with the tape player, but I was already like done with the book. I was like... Then I put my head down and fall asleep. So the Elder and their summoners and the magicians were summoning the Luna Well by means of the chop. How many other Final Fantasy games could you say you've flown a whale? Oh... Oh, Vix Vaporub. <laughs> what? <laughs> Available now at your CBS. <laughs> How many video games can you ever say you've played in which you've actually flown a whale? Hold on, I might, I think I might have an answer for that. Does it necessarily have to be RPG or just video game in general? 
RPG. RPG. Okay, then I guess my, my, Final, my answer. Anyway. Mind you, with Final Fantasy XIII, you write some pretty exotic shit. <laughs> you, you, you write what could be a whale. <laughs> no, seriously, Hecatunkeres is... I mean, not Hecatunkeres. Alex, you ride Alexander, who goes from Summon to Castle. You ride Brunhilder, which is Valkyrie turned into a flaming sports car. <laughs> and my personal favorite is Bahamut, who becomes a jet plane. <laughs> Bahamut the jet plane. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that was the plot I was talking about. We have a new ship, the Lunar Whale. And now we just leave it there? It functions. Yeah, it's a pinch and ride, but I don't know. I gotta, I gotta go pick up the groceries. No, it's too many. You know, no, you, it costs too many miles to the galley. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we can go over one continent without going, making a trip to the gas station. Johnny, it gets seven feet from one tank of gas. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> <laughs> That's pathetic. Anyway, so, what do we got? Bitchin'. So the Mythic Blade, along with the Man of Mantide, made the Excalibur. Too bad he didn't get there in under 12 hours. No. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> well, will the tin armor count? <laughs> oh, okay. No, wait, didn't the tin armor give you, like, no special abilities in Final Fantasy IX? Uh, no, I think the tin armor was the best armor in the game. In Final Fantasy IX, yeah, but yeah. at the cost of you not really learning anything off of it. But well, then again, by, by that, that point, point you're, you're done. Sure, yeah, you're, you're, you know the game, you're done already. So we got the Excalibur. It's a really strong sword for Cecil. It's actually the second best sword in the game. For I would imagine. Without doing, the, without doing the optional dungeons that we'll be doing later. I would imagine it is, considering it's called Excalibur, and that's sort of like a plot ticket to really powerful sword. Yeah. Well, we, you saw when we equipped the blade, we got like an additional 60 points added Damn. to our attack. So yeah, it's a really powerful blade, and I'm glad we got it now. But if and then Cecil screws up, drops it in the water, and it rusts. <laughs> Suddenly, it's the Excalibur. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Believe it or not, Final Fantasy XIII, two, Gilgamesh yeah. finally gets Excalibur. Oh, does he? It's like it, he actually fights you with it, he, and, it, and he doesn't it, know how to use it. No, <laughs> he does. But what we'll call it? Um, in Final Fantasy XIII, two, Gilgamesh has does the repeated thing for Final Fantasy XII, where he uses a sword from each game. Yeah. But it works differently. But the mythos is different. Like, it goes something like he found the Excalibur in Alexandria from Final Fantasy IX, his Zantetsuken from Dissidia, which is a replica blade of the uh, regular Zantetsuken, the Masamun from Final Fantasy X somewhere in Xanarkin, and interestingly enough, one of his weapons, the uh, Bashoshin, Bashonin, I think it's called, yeah, is a tribute to his friend Ankitu. That was the demon, right? The green demon that followed him? Yeah, in yeah. Final Fantasy XII, it's his dog. Oh, it's his dog in twelve. And it's funny yeah. as hell. Fly, you can do fly, my loyal companion! I said fly! If you recall last time we were here, we got blocked by an invisible force. Wait, what? And now Cecil's gonna commit Dayside on his king. Well, the king Regicide. turned out, Well, the original king turned out to... He, he died when the elemental archfiend took his place. But he was able to... He was able to find power in becoming a summon. So now he, the, the old king of Baron is Odin. Wait, 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 wait. How the fuck did you lose... Do you sure you want this loser to your team, Johnny? What? <laughs> he lost to Cognazzo, who you easily killed. Yeah, but it could be running off Star Wars logic. If you strike me down, I'll become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. In real life, however, if you get struck down, you're dead. Yeah, but this isn't real life. Oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this then. is Final Fantasy IV. You must become almighty. How do I do that? Well, first you gotta die. <laughs> Everybody wants to get to heaven. Nobody wants to die. Uh, Basically that shit. <laughs> but Odin is weak to lightning. Myth, as Mythos says, he's weak. What was it? The what was it, the, the myth? Was that lightning struck his blade and that's why he died? Like yeah. That. But anyway, Odin, as you realize, he's oh damn, that makes the Final Fantasy VI thing a lot more make a lot more sense. What? Odin always dies to become Raiden. Raiden yeah. is like another. Raiden is basically electricity. Yeah. Well, the transformation sequence is not conducted by lightning, but it does make there is relevance. I know what you mean. Um, but anyway, I blew through Rod uh, Odin pretty quickly, but and I killed my king again. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, but he's with us now in spirit. He's with us now as a fucking horseback rider. You have a time limit to beat Odin. I think you got about a, got a, you got about a minute. If you uh, take too long, Odin will use Antisuken, which will do which is not an instant kill, but it does about four thousand points of damage, so it might as well be an instant kill. Yeah. And you can't block it. So oh, no, spam not. electrical attacks, Cecil attacks, Kane oh no. Oh <laughs> I missed him already. <laughs> <laughs> Just got 
this fucking ninja who dies every once in a while. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> well, tune in next week, ladies uh, and gentlemen. But next week, ladies plot. and gentlemen, we're going to the moon! But first, we gotta knock Rosa there. <laughs> <laughs>